Hello friends, welcome to Gurney with Creekside. I am Jenny and welcome to our weekly nursery tour. We're going to do things a little bit different this week and we're going to give you an update here at the production. So it's going to be a production nursery tour because there's been a lot of things going on here behind the scenes that you do not see um, and we wanted to show them to you and you will see the fruits of all of this later, labor later in the season, possibly end of this summer, fall and definitely next year. So we have been quite, quite busy here at Creekside Nursery doing all sorts of planting, rearranging, infrastructure, so forth and so on. You know the life of a nurseryman is never boring. It is never still. Um, the spring season is starting to kind of slow down a little bit. The temperatures are going up. The crowds are starting to go down a little bit, but it is time to plant mums. So come with me. Um, I would say we, but I was not directly involved in this venture this year. Um, Jerry and our wonderful staff got 500 plus mums potted up la last week. Yeah, so a week or two ago, got them all done. They are in, when we do our mums, we do them in the plastic terracotta pots. We just like that because that way it's a nice looking pot that you can just buy the mum and put it directly on your front porch and it looks a little nicer than say just a black nursery pot. So we have 500 of these babies in here. They're spaced about what two feet apart from each other and we space them two feet apart because we're thinking again maximum size. Right now of course we could shove them right together and have the pots touching but mums really do grow quite rapidly. They love the hot sun. They love to be fertilized um, so they will grow rapidly. So we went ahead and spaced them out imagining their full size because when they are fully grown, they will be kissing each other. They will be really nice and full and big. The vast majority of these will have three plugs in them. Sometimes we do two, sometimes we do three. This year we went ahead and did three plugs per pot. This is a 10 inch terracotta pot. So they will be huge and beautiful. And of course we do all the colors, right? The reds, the yellows, the orange, purpley pink and white. So we have all of those colors. They will be ready starting probably in September. So mums of course are like any other flower. You have early varieties, mid and late bloomers. So we have this progression of blooms. And so like for like instance, yellow. When we're picking out our varieties to, to grow this year and every year we pick some early blooming yellows mid blooming yellows, late blooming yellows. So depending on one, the weather, two, the crowds, when people need certain, you know, color, we have that all available. Because if you did just early bloom yellow, well, by October, they're all gone. So we have them um, just, there's tags in all of them. They're spaced out through here. Remember when we were here, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, we talked about how we have switched from the drip tape to the overhead system. So it is running, it is doing great. Um, you will see the, the um, irrigation heads sticking up with that one inch white flexible pipe that's going down and connecting them. Um, so that is up and operational and they are doing great. So now we just have to watch these little babies grow. And they're gonna get a, a drip system later on. So Jerry says that they will get a drip system later on that is because, why? We want to be able to feed them liquid food. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's right. So, um, I forgot about that. So, like I said, moms are heavy feeders, so you've got to keep them fertilized. It would not be cost efficient whatsoever to run the liquid fertilizer through the overhead um, sprinklers. Of course, it can be done. It's just, we're just not going to do that. So, we will have the drip tape that will be used so when we fertilize, we're more focused, our energy is more focused on where that fertilized water goes into the pot and not just out into the vast open yonder. All right, now moving on. Oh, we have got, huh, I tell you, this has been a journey, these sweet little things. These are perennial hibiscus from Proven Winners. This is the Summerific series. These are some of the best plants 
some of my absolute favorites. There are tons of different colors in the Summerific series, but perennial hibiscus are just such a fantastic shrub to have in your landscape. I guess technically they're perennials. They're not a shrub, they're a perennial. They come from Walters Gardens. Walters does just an amazing job with their breeding program. Um, traditionally, we always get the grade one rootstock. This year, that was not available. Um, due to the gardening craze of last year, they just simply didn't have the rootstock. So I believe Kata told me that it's a three year, when we get that grade one rootstock, that's a three year old plant. So this year we had to get what they call a 72 plug. That means there's 72 plugs per tray. So like when we did our annuals, that kind of thing. So there's 72 in there, so they were a little bit smaller. So it's gonna take them a little bit longer to, to grow and be ready. The grade one rootstock is you put them, in the, put them in the pot and then boom, it's like almost instantaneously you have a full pot. So this is gonna take just a little bit of time to fill out, but we have, um, Spinderella, Holy Grail, and French Vanilla. So all of those are colors that we love and adore and they are doing great. So that's what's in here. Now, because of doing the overhead sprinkler system, we're able to go from the row system that we use with the mums to more of the block system. We can really get a lot more plants in here. These are all nice and tucked in here really tight. So we have Lime Light Prime right here. So let me show you that. Dirty tags. So Lime Light Prime is a new one. Of course, we love Lime Light. So this is on the back of the tag. It says even better than the original. So let's go look at that tag for just a moment. Now remember Lime Light's are just that gorgeous, um, start out as a creamy white and then they'll mature to like a lime green. And then these guys um, will turn, you know, to that kind of mauvey pink in the late summer. So what is the difference? These have stronger stems, they bloom earlier, and they are a little bit smaller. So they're almost that way between um, the little lime and the limelight, they're like in the middle. So if Limelight's the daddy, Little Lime's the baby, Limelight Prime is the teenager. So they're right there in the middle. So these, of course, these panicle hydrangeas are fast growers. So these will be um, ready, I suspect, end of summer, early fall, because they are just great, great growers. Now, in this little section, this pop of color right here, this is Sun Joy Neo. This is a barberry. They sent us a one gallon um, trial end of last summer. And folks, this is the most gorgeous plant right now. I have it down at the house. It is flaming deep red, absolutely gorgeous. Now you're like, Jenny, it's a barberry, it's pokey. Well, yes, it does have little pricklies on it, but that's all right, so do roses and you love roses. So these will be fine. So. They are, they're not big ones, no. Um, but it does help deter, you know, little critters from crawling around in your garden. Um, these are gonna have that gorgeous color. These are hardy end zones five to eight, and they're nice and petite. They're only two and a half feet tall and wide. Just fantastic. You get gorgeous color. So even now, obviously they have this beautiful color. So. I think I know where I'm gonna plant some of these in our landscape at the house because you just can't resist that massive pop of color. Speaking of roses and pokey things, here we have At Last. So we have At Last is in here. You can see we've got buds popping up. At Last, of course you can't say the, the name without singing the Eddie James song in your head. I won't do that to you. Um, but this is a fantastic landscape rose, beautiful kind of an apricot, peachy color, and it smells fantastic. It smells like a rose should smell. Just a beautiful one. Coming down here, we have the oh so easy lemon zest. 
I love the lemon zest because it too has a beautiful sweet rose smell to it, but it's going to be more wide where the at last is upright. This is going to be a little bit more of a mound, continuous bloomer, nice pale, um, kind of a buttery yellow, just beautiful. Of course, here we have some more hydrangeas. These are all little limes. We love and adore little limes. They are just amazing plants. Gem boxes are here. Gem boxes are a wonderful alternative to like a boxwood. You don't really like a boxwood. So this is an inkberry holly. It is not pokey, nice and soft. It's a great plant. Um, coming on down here, we have some, I think, oh, this is the new viburnum, y'all. I get so excited. Now this is a fun one. This is, an, is another new shrub from Proven Winters. This is Sweet Talker. If you remember where we planted the flower bed for Laura and Aaron on their Garden Answer highlights, I'll link it above. We did a, a bed at the um, nursery, the bank bed behind the pergola, and I put Sweet Talker in the center because she's gonna get eight to 10 feet tall, three to five feet wide. So she's gonna make quite an impact and she does in the early spring those beautiful little tiny pink trumpet flowers that are just all over it. So it's just a beautiful, very early bloomer, nice sweet smell. So if you're looking for something um, to bring an early smell flower to your garden, of course you cannot um, go wrong with this one. And it is an evergreen, so there you go. So those of you that are afraid you're gonna miss um, some foliage. This Sweet Talker Viburnum is a great one. It's my problem is when I pull them out, I can't remember where the tags go. All right, speaking with Viburnums, here we have Yin and Yang. Now, these are great. So I have Yin and Yang planted right there at the patio. Now, Yin and Yang are um, kind of a new plant in a way because they are that evergreen viburnum. They have beautiful foliage. They will do, my tag's dirty so forgive me, tea tiny white clusters, white flower clusters in the early spring. They have just a beautiful foliage. The stems are absolutely gorgeous and they're nice and petite. Now, you have yin and yang because if you plant them together, then they will pollinate back and forth and you can get berries off of them. Um, just absolutely, um, you'll get those little blueberries on them. Not really edible, but yin and yang. The plant wise, like in the garden, I have no clue which one is yin and I don't know which one is yang because they look the exact same. So I have it just in there and they are doing great. Forsythias are here just gorgeous this is show off or is this this is show off show off lives up to its name because this too is in oh no show off sugar baby so it's just a dwarf version you know like limelight little lime so it's a sugar baby so the, these forsythias or yellow bells as i grew up calling them is a nice dwarf forsythia the show off can get nice and tall. This sweet thing is only going to be about two and a half feet tall and wide at its max. You want to talk about massive flower power, I mean, and big blooms on them. The show off, both the show off and the show off sugar baby are wonderful. And then look at that foliage, like beautiful foliage. Then we have some spireas, more hydrangeas. Let's see who you are. Can you tell we like the hydrangeas around here? Oh, firelight. Fire lights are a great, another panicle hydrangea that we have planted um, behind our garden boxes. Again, these are very similar to limelights in that they're panicles, they're full sun, they start out a beautiful creamy white, but these will turn pink and red. And ours actually did last year. Sometimes limelights will not do that because we don't have cool nights, we have hot, humid nights. My fire lights all changed color, and in fact, I dried some of the blooms, and I still have them in the house, and they have that beautiful aged mauve look to them. 
So fire lights are fantastic. They're going to be zones three to eight, six to eight feet tall and wide. Um, so those are great ones. I'll try to remember to link a video where you can see these guys in full bloom. Moving on down, Laura Pedalum. These are the Jazz Hands, Jazz Hands Bold. Nice, big, beautiful foliage on them. Evergreens, of course. Um, these are the Scentlandia. Just a great, beautiful, great for fall color on them. Sweet little colors, um, white blooms on them. Hydrangeas, hydrangeas, hydrangeas. Oh my goodness. You know me, we could just sit here and talk about plants all the live long day. Um, and then we have, these are the shrubs that we planted last year that came to us from Spring Meadow, just like these guys did. Um, so these are plants that need, these are butterfly bushes and things right here that need to be moved on down to the nursery. What doesn't get moved down to the nursery at this exact moment, we will rework into blocks like this take this drip tape off um, because right now it's just it's not functioning because we're doing all the overhead um, but some beautiful plants in here I mean look at this so we have white pugsters there is Miss Molly and Miss Violet there are pink pugsters the blue pugsters love the pugsters because they're nice petite um, butterfly bush but nice big fat blooms on them um, so we've got lots of those, of course, more hydrangeas. So I want to show you some other things that Jerry and the crew have been working on. We have been blessed this summer with a wonderful staff, um, an amazing staff of folks. We've got just great people. And so they are some very hard workers and they don't complain when we ask them to do something. They're wonderful. We love our people. So they have been working on this from a distance. Can you see that greenhouse is basically it's empty. It's fantastic. So of course there are some hanging baskets in there, but on the ground, there are no plants in there. So it's like, yes, we're getting somewhere. Um, we have added very added gravel to this whole area, just cleans it up when you're in a production mode you don't need red clay you don't need the red mud you don't want to have grass growing and weeds growing all up on your production lot so we've added some more gravel here just um, cleaned it up a little bit then today what the folks jerry and the guys were doing was really working on laying mulch we've had two tractor trailers full of mulch come one was yesterday one was today but they got this bank completely covered in mulch that goes all the way down um, again getting rid of that red clay mud because it rains and then it comes into your gravel and makes the gravel it just makes a mess red clay is just a gift that just keeps on getting so they got that done and then coming down here um, Jerry had gosh I don't know when that was a week or two ago um, planted some of this area right below so right now the second greenhouse is right behind jerry so coming down here um, this is where the tractor trailer dumped the mulch and when i say a tractor trailer like i mean it's a full tractor trailer dumped the mulch here and then um, this is that bank is so steep right here beside the greenhouse they got that covered so that looks so much better and then down here is where um, Jerry had gotten all this mulch thrown out of here. <clears throat> we had some emerald, emerald greens. Yeah, I think. Yeah, some emerald greens that we were growing and they just weren't quite doing exactly what we wanted them to do. They weren't really nursery worthy. So whenever we have plants like that, we'll just a lot of times just stick them in the landscape. So he planted a hedge up next to the woods of those. And then if you can see right over my shoulder here, he had a bunch of hydrangeas. Are these the mystery hydrangeas? They're, or do we know what they are? They're phantom. Limelight, little there's lime. There's a little lime in there, limelight. Yeah. There's, uh, might be a white wedding in there. So again, in the nursery business, sometimes tags get misplaced and plants get mislabeled. So <laughs> they're not blooming right now, obviously. And so it's really kind of hard to tell what exactly those hydrangeas are. 
Again, hence why I let them go to waste. We're putting them in the landscape so they will be gorgeous here. So it's a mix of probably some phantoms, some limelights, some white weddings, um, panicle hydrangeas, sun-loving hydrangeas, um, not your uh, macrophilia hydrangeas. It's so, nice to come up when you're working. Yeah, well it is. I mean, we like to, we like to work in a pretty environment. We don't want to come working in, you know, weed infested, red clay, mud, right? You want to be surrounded and we're working so hard to create all these beautiful plants for you. We want to enjoy them as well. So, you know, that's, and that really is what we do around the nursery. Like the nursery itself is plant these things for inspiration. So even for us, it gives us some inspiration here up at the production lot. Um, so, and two, if we do have guests that come up here, it, it looks nice and that's kind of important. Um, I think that's about it. Is there anything else to talk about? He's thinking. He's, I, think I, I think I rambled on for quite a long time here. You know, I start talking about shrubs and all the different plants and I think, oh, well, we'll just do a quick little tour. And then, you know, 45 minutes later, Jenny's still talking. So anyway, so this is the nursery tour update here at the production lot. Of course, things will always be moving, always be changing. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for all of your support with um, not only Creekside Nursery, but Gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.